Uh, well, I, 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 I mean, I was brought up a, uh, by a, a Methodist mother and a Marxist father. Um, and so uh, sociology turned out to be things I've been talking about uh, ever since I started arguing with my friends and so on. So I'd intended to be a, an economist uh, when I went to university. And uh, of course, then I found sociology and, oh, that's what I've been doing. Yeah. Uh, and of course, uh, I did an undergraduate degree at Leicester where there was an extraordinarily good standard yeah. of uh, education. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was given tutorials by Tony Giddens and, and went to his lectures uh, in social psychology. And it was towards the end of his uh, social psychology, of course, in my third year, that um, uh, I first heard mention of Irving Goffman. Which was a, a fairly decisive moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And social anthropology was the senior department, yeah. uh, with Max Gluckman uh, uh, being a very, uh, often very terrifying uh, yeah. preeminence there. An awful lot of us were very young. Yeah. Uh, so actually, the, the senior people in, in sociology uh, tended to be anthropologists in, in yeah. origin, like Worthley himself, yeah. Valdo Pons, Ronnie Frankenberg. Yeah. Uh, they'd all been associated with the Manchester School of Anthropology. Intellectually, it was very exciting. Yeah. Uh, the anthropologists were extremely rigorous and um, yeah. uh, contestive uh, investigators. Uh, well, John Lee and I, who, who were yeah. very much involved together, uh, we found we had the same kind of ambition, which was to yeah. connect Weberian uh, action sociology with... Uh, something like anthropological fieldwork yeah, yeah. uh, uh, and some of the uh, landmark studies that, that initially were examples for us were, were ones that were a kind of anthropological approach to the workplace. Yeah. Uh, yeah. David Morgan, the Connissons, yeah. uh, Sheila Connison, so Tom Lopton yeah. uh, had been doing these shop floor studies. Yeah. Uh, um, whilst I, I, I would say nothing against uh, uh, Leicester as a, a place to study sociology at that time. Yeah. Uh, I had kind of this nagging uh, dissatisfaction that you couldn't really easily apply all the schemes and stuff to the world around you that you can yeah. see every day. So I, I'd read The Trumpet Shall Sound as an undergraduate. I thought it was a great book. So yeah. when I saw a letter in The New Statesman signed by Peter Worsley, you know, it's, I thought I'll go there. Mm -hmm. uh, so I actually came here in, uh, uh, in the summer before my graduate year to get a card for the library, yeah. where it turned out all of Irving Goffman's books were in the basement. Yeah. Um, so I read, so, yeah. and oh yes, this is really good, but it, it's not satisfactory, it doesn't go far enough. Yeah. And then in, I think, it, I'm not sure, 1966 or 67, uh, Goffman was a, a Simon Fellow here yeah. for uh, several weeks. He gave several lectures. And in one of them, he suddenly started talking about uh, Harold Garfinkel and, and Harvey Sachs. Yeah. Uh, so naturally, my ears pricked up. I mean, partly it was the, the methodological logic of, yeah. of seeing sociology's uh, difficulties with the objectification of social phenomena. But um, uh, the, the other thing was, of course, the, the uh, possibility of something like a real-time construction of the, the actor's point of view, yeah. uh, you know, rather than the attribution of yeah. uh, frames of reference and stuff, you could, could yeah. uh, attempt to investigate how social structures are encountered in uh, the course of yeah, yeah. activities. I think a lot of people thought that, that sociology was fundamentally under threat, yeah. uh, and many people thought that their conception of what sociology is was uh, going to be destroyed. Um, well, I, I, I never, I mean, I don't think sociology is a, uh, a unified discipline yeah. uh, in any real sense. Uh, I mean, I always say to the students, well, yes, we teach you Marx, Weber and Durkheim, yeah. but what you should do is go and look at, say, one of the great historical books like uh, Barnes and Becker's Social Thought from Law to Science yeah. or some of Sorokin's yeah. Uh, contemporary social theories. Sociologists do what they want. Yeah. Um, uh, they're not bound by uh, yeah. conceptions of what sociology, yeah. what you ought to do uh, for the needs of sociology. They want sociology to serve 
uh, whatever intellectual or political or social purposes they have. And of course, uh, whilst I'm not against, by any means, against academic boundaries, um, I mean, some of the social science disciplines, particularly psychology, yeah. uh, anthropology uh, yeah. and sociology, are, are very closely connected in reality. And yeah. sociologists generally don't recognise the extent to which they're up to the neck in philosophical issues. Yeah. And even when they think they are engaged with philosophy, they don't recognise the extent yeah. to which yeah. uh, what they're doing trails lots of other philosophical issues. Yeah, uh, I yeah. think sociology underestimates the work the language does. Yeah. Um, you know, it underestimates the work that the natural language does. Yeah. I mean, that was one of the things, uh, most striking things about ethnomethodology, and it's where I start uh, my course today, is with yeah. uh, sociology as a natural language activity. Yeah. Uh, and so the extent to which what's being done comes from the structures of, of the language yeah. uh, rather from the, than from the mechanics of the methods or the logic of the yeah. theory is, is uh, yeah. massively understated, massively unappreciated. Yeah. Well, I, I think yeah. um, Graham Button uh, and uh, I and some other people uh, were actually involved in, in some work which um, in Reich Xerox actually came yeah. close to being a possible yeah. technology to, to develop. I mean, I've never, you know, I've never been opposed to the application yeah. of sociology. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that sociological research should be motivated yeah. by the, the wish to apply it. Yeah. Uh, I think it should be motivated by the wish to do some sociology yeah. and then see if it can be applied. You know, we got obviously um, uh, access to a, a very interesting field of, yeah. of uh, academic activity, cooperative, yeah. computer-supported cooperative work, yeah. at least from our point of view, it was a very adventitious meeting. I mean, yeah. uh, here were computer scientists who were trying to design for workplaces and organizational yeah. environments. Uh, and most of them just wanted to write code. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, of course, they didn't really want to go around hanging about workplaces to see yeah. uh, what people in workplaces were about. So the fact that a yeah. group of us at Manchester were really interested in hanging about workplaces meant yeah. uh, that they were only too happy to have us yeah. uh, come, and, um, come and look at what they were doing. It, 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 ethnomethodology is not a base for a kind of input into design method yeah. uh, as such. Uh, in these contexts, it's mostly uh, a basis for uh, gathering materials that can yeah. be input into the understandings of designers yeah. who can then apply whatever methods are useful to, yeah, yeah. Sure. to exploit yeah. it. If sociology is to kind of yield the kind of uh, achievement that I think lots and lots of sociologists still yearn for, yeah. you know, which is really converted into something uh, that's powerfully scientific. Yeah. Uh, this will, of course, come from left field. It will not be anything yeah. that's anticipated. And I think yeah. uh, projects to make sociology more scientific, yeah. uh, which uh, remain, will yeah. probably remain as fruitless uh, as they have been so far. I, I, nothing I see in the nature of sociology uh, suggest to me that in actual, rather than as a matter of pieties, uh, if even that, that, that most people in sociology want uh, to work towards a unified yeah. uh, and coherent subject. Yeah. Um, I mean, the extent to which stuff has migrated into cultural studies, yeah. to feminism yeah. and so on, uh, not claiming these things yeah. for sociology, but yeah. uh, stuff has, has diversified into different branches, yeah. suggests the centripetal tendencies within what yeah. we call the discipline. Uh, I mean, I, I, as I say, I was doing this, you know, worrying about these kind of things uh, before I'd even heard of sociology. Um, and, you know, I, I always find things, oh, uh, get me going and start me thinking. So I, I, I don't need any reason to do it. You don't need a reason to do sociology. You do it because you can't help yourself yeah. uh, in many ways. Um, and and uh, uh, I, I will stop when I stop. I, I won't. I can't. I mean, I can't control.